Hey guys, you're watching Python Tutorials on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopist. In this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about data augmentation using Keras. Now, data augmentation is very, very useful if you would like to augment your data or increase the amount of training or validation data. Now, if you have 2000 images, let's say, and you would like to get 5,000 or 10,000 of those, then this can be very useful. But if you only have five or 10 images, don't expect to get 2,000 or 20,000 images out of data augmentation and still be able to get decent results out of your uh, uh, deep learning because your deep learning will be highly, highly biased towards these five or 10 images that you're augmenting. So please use this tool in a, uh, in a wise way. Now, if you what to do if you only have a handful of images, or if you have less than 100 or 200 images, then I recommend using traditional machine learning. Again, watch my videos on this topic. Just search for traditional machine learning in my, uh, in my channel. And uh, what I mean by traditional machine learning is where you extract features and then use like random forest or support vector machines. Now for deep learning data augmentation can be useful and let's uh, actually dive in to have a quick look. Okay. Uh, now, I have already pre-written a few lines of code, so I'll copy a few lines to explain. But first, let me show you the folder structure that I have here. So I'm going to use a couple of images that I have. First, I'm going to show you single image to, to demonstrate the data augmentation uh, process. And then I'm going to show you, okay, now that you have done it for single images, how to do it for a couple of images that you have, okay? now. If you really have like a two or three different classes of images, okay, so I believe I created a folder there. Let's say uh, a folder for all Einstein images, a folder for all Mona Lisa images, or think of a folder for all, you know, cats and dogs and, you know, automobiles and that kind of stuff, then there is an easier way. So I'm gonna show you all these three ways. And by the way, I only have one image of each here, which proves the point anyhow, okay? Uh, and in the next tutorial, I'm gonna actually apply this on malarial cells, parasitized and uh, uninfected cells, where we use data augmentation. I've already done a video on this, but without data augmentation. And this time let's do data augmentation. So let's jump in. So uh, first of all, let me show you how this works on a, uh, on a single image, okay? So let me jump back and copy a few lines of code and explain what these mean in a second. So here you go. Now, first of all, data generator is part of your keras.preprocessing.image, okay? And again, uh, in case you wonder, I'm using TensorFlow. Let's go ahead and do that. Import TensorFlow as TF, okay? And now TF version. Oh, sorry, tf dot version, and I'm using 1.4, and for Keras, I'll do the same. So, you know, if things don't work on yours, you can always check what version you have, okay? So, Keras dot, I believe it is 2.0.8, yeah. So, my TensorFlow is 1.4 and Keras is 2.0.8. I know TensorFlow 2. Point, uh, whatever is out and Keras latest uh, updates are out, but they do not work for the GPU I have. So I'm sticking with this. My GPU is NVIDIA Quadro, Quadro K5000, which is an old one, but still works very well, okay? Okay, uh, now of course, whatever technique I'm showing you, you don't need a GPU, but I'm just showing you that, okay, with this, uh, the reason why I have these two is because I want to use my GPU. Okay, so now that that's out of our uh, uh, question, so let's go and look at the libraries that we need. First of all, the library that we need for data augmentation is called image data generator. Well, the method is called image data generator. It's part of our Keras library and inside preprocessing.image, okay? So I'll share the code so you should be able to do this. So please focus on the content here and not the single lines of code. You can always copy it from the file that I share. Okay, I'm also importing scikit uh, IO from scikit image so we can read a single image, okay? Now, first we need to create an instance for this image data generator. Yeah, and the way you do that is it's customary to call it data gen. You can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to do data gen equals to image data generator. Yeah, this one. And then the first, are, uh, and keep adding your arguments, right? So here, 
uh, I want to uh, rotate my image between 0 to 45 degrees, random rotation. Again, 45 is just a limit. Uh, and uh, width shift uh, range, in this case, it's shifting in X by 20% of whatever the image size is. And height, it's doing the same thing, 20%. And the shear, it sh shears the image by 20%. Zoom range, 20%. Zoom in, zoom out by 20%. Horizontal flip equals to true, so it just does a mirror reflection. You can also add vertical flip. You can add a whole bunch of stuff. Now, this is one of the key things that not many people talk about. If you watch other videos, they don't talk too much about the fill mode. At least I didn't find much uh, when I was learning it. So maybe there are much, uh, uh, you know, more uh, videos now. But anyway, fill mode is okay when you move the image by 20%. There is some dark, I mean, some space left over, right, in your image. What do you want to fill that with? If the fill mode is constant, you can, uh, you don't have to give a value. If you don't give a value, then it would be black pixels. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. If you put a value of, uh, let's say, 125, then it would be a gray pixel, right? So pixel and a value of 125 is gray, zero is black, and 255 is white. Okay, so this is how we are going to move, shift, and shear our images. And I created a folder called Augmented. So here, let's actually save all the augmented images. Now, how do you apply this? First of all, uh, let us let me show you on a single case. Yeah, I, I would like to read a single image and I'm assigning to a variable called X. How am I reading it? IO.imread, right? Again, this is just reading a single image. You can use OpenCV, you can use whatever method to read an image, it doesn't matter. And I'm reading this as a uh, color image and I'm reading just the Mona Lisa single image, okay? As a color image because I did not say as gray equals to true, okay? Again, I hope you worked with uh, scikit image. If not, again, go ahead and uh, watch my video on that topic. Okay, so once we do that, what do we do next? So next, let's actually reshape. Let's copy all of these lines so I can explain them. Uh, go ahead and save this and uh, let's run the code up to this point, up to the point where we are reading it. And if you look up here, my X is 256 by 256 by three, a single image of 256 by 256 size, and three represents it's a color image for red, green, and blue channels, okay? So now I'm reshaping it, and there's a reason why I'm reshaping this. And when I reshape it, my X became one, 256, 256, and three. That's because most machine learning uh, you know, when you're going into the convolutional layers or something else, you know, the input size is typically, the first one is the number of images. In this case, only one image. If you have 1,000 images, that would be 1,000 by your image X and Y dimensions, 256 and 256, by the number of channels. If it's a grayscale image, that would be one. If it's color image, that's three, okay? So that's why I'm reshaping it. And now down here, the way we are applying this data uh, generator. This is an instance that we created, right? The way you apply that is datagen.flow, okay? Ignore this fur part for now, okay? Datagen.flow. Dot flow because it's a single image. Later on, I'll show you flow from directory when we want to suck a whole bunch of images from a directory structure, okay? So dot flow and the x is our x, right? which is nothing but n numpy array of size one by 256 by 256 by three. And batch size 16 means it's actually creating 16 images at a time. Yeah, it's generating or augmenting 16 images. And save to directory, I'm going to save all, in this case, I'm going to save. But typically when you apply augmentation, you just apply it while you're training it, while you're training an algorithm, okay? So you're not gonna save all these thousands of images. You can if you want, but uh, you're going to augment the data on the fly. That's how it happens. You're not gonna save it. But for now, I wanna show you how the output looks like. So I'm going to save this to a directory called augmented. That's why I created this augmented directory. And then I'm gonna put AUG as a prefix to each image. And then I'm gonna save all the images as PNG. You can put JPEG, uh, you know, if you want. And this fur part is, I'm just doing this until uh, uh, I generate 20 images. That's pretty much it, okay? Otherwise, this data gen is in finite loop. It keeps generating images until you put a stop to it. Now, in real life scenario, you have number of epochs as a, st a stopping point. You have the batch size. You have a, other ways of stopping it. Right now, I don't have other ways of stopping it, so I'm just uh, setting a limit of uh, 
uh, 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. I hope things are clear right now and let's do this in a second uh, one more time. But uh, when I open my augmented now, I should see a whole bunch of images. Now you see how these images are, let's actually view extra large icon. So you can see this part is filled with gray of value 125. If you do not put anything here, you just say, okay, mode equals to constant. Let me delete all of these images, okay? To make the folder empty. And now when you generate this, of course it's going to, again, randomly generate a whole bunch of images, but then you see the default value for the fill is zero. I am not a big fan of this. It kind of works okay for object detection, for example, but in reality, if you want to do, for example, generative adversarial networks, and you want your image uh, to be completely filled with something that's realistic, yeah? Otherwise, your generated images also will have like these type of, uh, you know, uh, black boundaries. I do not like that. So let's try a, a couple more. So if you try nearest, which is the default, I believe, if you don't give any fill mode, nearest is the default. Uh, it's okay, but again, let's go back to large icons and delete everything. So we see the output of what nearest looks like. Okay, so let's open this. And as you can see, nearest is, it's actually looking at the nearest pixels and it's stretching it. Yeah, let's keep going through, stretches it. This is also, I mean, this is acceptable for most applications, but again, uh, not my favorite because uh, again, if you are trying to do, uh, uh, for pixel segmentation, that's okay, but if you're trying to do generative adversarial networks, that's not good. So what actually works best is reflect. This is my personal favorite. And uh, for again, for generative adversarial networks. For other stuff, you can, again, depends on the application. Now you see, as the name suggests, reflect is, it's just reflecting this part. But look at these images. They look very, I mean, you see, that's where it's reflecting. So you see that weird shape. This is where it's reflecting. This is where it's reflecting. So you can see how it's actually reflecting. So it looks like a real image. The entire image looks pretty realistic. That's why I like this. And warp, I think is the, is that the warp or wrap? Sorry, not warp. Wrap is wrapping it. Okay, just like nearest, wrap actually wraps it around. So it's a different way again. So as you can see, the head instead of up there is coming back down here. Okay, it's just wrapping it. Now, again, this works very well for nuclei images or other type of images, not just these type of paintings, but in real life, uh, wrap also may work very well. But my pers personal favorite, like I said, uh, for most applications tends to be this uh, 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 reflect, yeah? So let's go back to our reflect, okay? And let me show you something else. Now, that was only one image. What if you want to augment a whole bunch of images that are in your folder? Okay, let's say you have a folder and you have 1000 different Mona Lisa images and you would like to do that, uh, uh, augment those. So for that, again, I'll show you a couple of ways. For that, what I would uh, recommend is, let's go back and show you this. Again, this is basically reading an image uh, or images out of a directory. Uh, let me remove this scikit image. I think I already imported it. And I'm importing a uh, uh, library again called NumPy and OS so I can actually uh, get the file names from a directory. Again, please watch my video, uh, previous videos on this topic or there are a whole bunch of other videos on YouTube. So go ahead and search for how to use OS and then I'm using PIL to import an image. Again, you can also use scikit image if you want, okay? Again, I'm just showing you a different way. Now I'm defining my image directory as test folder. Again, in my test folder, I have a, let's say we have a thousand images. In this case, two images, but it doesn't matter how many. Now I, I define my target size as 128 because I'd like to, no matter what size your input images are, well, let's actually resize them all to the same size. Okay, so uh, it, it, it works smoothly with our next step, which would be convolutional neural networks or UNet or whatever you'd like to do with that data. Now I started an empty uh, list called dataset and I'm gonna fill the information that I'm getting from each image into this dataset, okay? And the next step I'm uh, uh, walking through our uh, using os.listdir to look inside my image directory and, it, uh, and then I'm going to uh, uh, enumerate it using a for loop, right? So when I use a for loop, 
I am actually looking at each image and for each image, right, image name, for each image, I'm going to split it at JPEG. In this case, this is JPEG, that's why I'm doing that. If it's PNG, go ahead and type PNG here. And then I'm going to use uh, scikit image, io.imread, and uh, image directory plus my file name. And now I'm going to read them as RGB and I'm going to resize them. Uh, uh, into 128 by 128 and finally after this what I get is a data set let's actually run this okay so we can see so this part we already ran but that's okay up to this point I'm going to run all of these now if you look at my data set it's a list of two because I have two images and then each of this is a uh, separate image yeah so I do not want a list, I want a NumPy array, so I added this line, x equals to NumPy array dot, uh, data set, and now my x will be, you see the size of two, 128 by 128 by three. Previously we had one, 128 by 128 by three when we read only one image. So if we have 1000 images, that would be 1000, 128, 128, three, okay? So we are all set now to apply, let's create some room here to go ahead and apply pretty much the same thing. I shouldn't have deleted that part, but, uh, Let's do that. So now, I'm. this is exactly the same as before, yeah? With a batch size of 16. Now I'm actually uh, going to stop when uh, we get 20 images. So do we have any images in our augmented folder? If so, let's delete them, no, nothing. So let's run this. Now we should see augmented images of both Einstein and uh, Mona Lisa. So let's actually get in and there you go. So I have my Einstein and Mona Lisa. This is, again, think of this as having thousands of images. Now, typically, if you have two different classes, like Einstein class and Mona Lisa class, this is not the best way to do. If you have single class, this is a great way to do it. Okay, now what to do if you have multi-class uh, uh, problem that uh, you're trying to solve. Let's delete everything. Uh, I'm not going to delete this data gen because we are using the same data generator to kind of augment our images. So the next set, finally, multi-class is probably what you would be using for the most part. So multi-class right there. Now, again, I'm going to look into, let's delete all of these. Let's delete all these. I'm gonna look into a folder called Mona Lisa underscore Einstein. And here I put each image according to its classes because that's how this uh, data gen from flow from directory is going to read images. If you have single class, that's okay. Use single folder, subfolder, that's fine. But if you have five, six different classes, okay, cats, dogs, bicycles, airplanes, buses, then put all those images in the corresponding folders. And then instead of data gen dot flow, remember previously we used data gen dot flow. I'm not sure if you remember that part. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Previously for single images or previously when we are inputting a predefined array, yeah, our x was 2 by 128 by 128 by 3. We first generated this x and then supplied that, that as input. If you're going to do that, use data gen dot flow because your data, you're doing all pre-processing here manually, okay? But if you have these folders, the way you do that is data gen dot flow underscore from underscore directory. And then, as you can imagine, you have to give your directory name. So let's delete everything. Let me delete all of my variables. Let's clean the slate here so we can only look at this. Very few lines of code. First you define data gen and then uh, flow from directory, that's it, okay? Which directory? Mona Lisa underscore Einstein. Batch size 16, that means for each folder, it actually does 16 images for each, um, you know, yeah, subfolder. And target size 256, 256, you can do 128 by 128. So on the fly, you're resizing these images. You don't have to do it uh, beforehand like I showed you earlier. And then color mode, let's read them as RGB. So it creates these three channels and save to our augmented directory. Uh, the rest of it is pretty much the same, okay? And now I said if i is greater than 31, so uh, let's do like 32 images, I guess, in this case for each of these. So let's go ahead and run it. It says found two images belonging to two classes and now it's augmenting. So let's go ahead and open our augmented folder. There you go. All of these images augmented right here. Okay. Okay, so I hope uh, you learned something new as part of this tutorial. And then in the next one, 
I'm actually going to use this data flow from directory onto a convolutional neural network to do malarial infected malarial cells versus healthy malarial cell segmentation. So please stay tuned to watch that. Thank you very much. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so I don't have to remind you every time uh, you know, on Twitter or other places, you know, uh, when I create a new video. So thank you.